have not got up for Salatul Fajr today. It's a reality. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. yes and no. Meaning, I'm not accusing people in particular. I'm raising a point. Many of us have got up for Salatul Fajr, but we would have preferred to have been continued sleeping. You agree? We would have preferred it. Hey, you know what? I got up because it's a duty. I didn't get up because it's an honor. To convert yourself from understanding what is a duty and what is an honor is a line that you cross when you get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You read salah because you consider it a duty. Yes, it is a duty. But over and above that, it's an honor. I want to worship Allah. I am fulfilling salah not because I have to, but because I want to. Over and above me having to. So I'm not denying it is an obligation. But on top of that, I'm saying I'm so happy to fulfill it. I want to fulfill more than just the mere obligation. That itself is a struggle. Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, the Quran has verses in this beautiful book pertaining to talaq, pertaining to nikah, pertaining to inheritance. I cannot just implement those rules without ensuring that the conditions are met. I cannot come to a woman, look at her and say, I divorce you. Brother, you're not even married to her. Come on. You're not even married to her. This is what we are saying. The same ruling applies to jihad. We are saying it is valid if the conditions are met and those are strict and stringent conditions because life, my beloved brothers and sisters, is absolutely sacred. You need to understand that. Allah says if you take away one life unjustly, it is as though you have destroyed entire humanity. مِنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكَ كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا I'm sure by now you've understood the verse, most of you. Where Allah says, we have written and Allah has written it. It's ordained for us as well as for those before us. Allah says, we wrote that if you were to kill one soul unjustly or to create chaos on earth, it is as though you have destroyed entire humanity. That's what Allah says. Every single life, singular life is sacred. That's what it is. Every singular life, just like you feel you have the right to live, Every single life was given by the same maker who made you has an equal right to live just like you have. Understand that. And the same rule applies when it comes to the opposite, which means if you were to save one life, the Quran says, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever has saved one life, it's as though they have saved entire humanity. Remember that. So when you go out to save a life, is something sacred. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us through all our affairs. My brothers and sisters, that is the first type, or it's actually the third type, but I've mentioned it first, of the verses of the Quran. Then the same book has prophecies. Prophecies of the future. The Quran has in it certain verses. It's not the whole Quran. It is certain verses where Allah speaks about what's going to happen in the future. Allahu Akbar. Do you know the meaning of it? If you don't, please go back and look into it. I'm sure you know the surah off by heart, the bulk of you. 